you know, the, the thing is there's, there's no clear path for success. It's about how you make your own path yeah, and what things success. you pick up on the way, like, you know, what, like we were just talking about, going to the gyms, Gleason's in New York, going to the Las Vegas gyms, um, going to Miami to the gyms, going to Oakland. There's so many people with so many facets that they've learned from the people that taught them, who taught them, who yeah, taught them. Passed down, passed yeah. down knowledge. And, and there's nothing like heavyweight boxing that's different from the rest. Yeah, of course. Like, um, like you mentioned, it would, have been, it would be good to go to the different gyms and learn or even the, uh, see the different styles and obviously the different coaching as well. So, yeah, it's, um, it's definitely on my wish list. Because there's a moment probably in every fight whether you're looking for that moment where you're in trouble and someone said, no, take a knee. Mm. Or just tuck up. No, Push the elbow around there. Or... No, I've never really had that for girls. But, it, but it, it might come. It might come, yeah, it might come down yeah. the line. I mean, you've been there before. We talked earlier about when you were young and they threw you in the rugby team at school. What happened? No, so uh, this, is, this is actually... Um, in year seven, and my PE teacher. So it's twelve, thirteen, so year seven. About, yeah, it's about yeah, eleven, twelve, and um, one of my PE teacher said, "Oh, why you can't play rugby?" I said, "I don't even know the rules or anything." Were you big then? I was, yeah, I was massive, and I was, I was, I was quick and I was strong, and um, yeah, literally, he just said, "I'll just get the ball and run." So literally, they gave me the ball, I run. They have about seven people trying to take me down or whatnot. Obviously, I was just a strong kid, so I just, just ran. But it didn't do it for you, no? No, it just didn't do it for me. Rugby's not with me. And what about football then? Yeah, football actually I played I played the football quite a lot when I was a kid. It's um I liked I liked it a lot to be fair. Actually my second so obviously I went into boxing, then I quit boxing and went into football and obviously went back into boxing. But um yeah, I used to be a striker because obviously I used to be quick. And um yeah. Glory just, hunter. What's, what's that? Were you a glory hunter then up front? Um Scoring all the goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, it used to be, I used to score silly numbers. Like in school games, I used to score like six goals a game. Like because I, I was literally just a glitch. I was just, I was just, I was fast and strong. So like, why didn't you stick with it then? Um, I just, I saw no future in it. There's, there's thousands and thousands of kids playing football, and um, mm. you might even be the best one out of them. But just because you come from this area or you do this in a different way, you might never make it. And that's what I do like about boxing. It's, it's like it's open to anyone. It's the talent's always going to prevail. And it's about you doing it. Like we were talking earlier about, you could have had your best football game ever, exactly. but you might lose. Exactly. So obviously in boxing, it's down to you and your coaches. Obviously the right tactics obviously is needed. But if you, um, as long as you go in the ring 100%, they don't, they don't even need coaches for that. You can give anyone a, a tough night. Whereas in football, you can have the best game of your life. And just because your team ain't playing good, you will lose the game. One of the things we were talking about earlier, which I found fascinating about you is, see, you're a very young man. You watch these guys who've come from war-torn areas of the world. Mm. You know, like we were talking about Khabib Nurmagomedov earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kamzat Shimaev, these guys who are in mixed martial arts, yeah. but they've grown up in war-torn areas. And you almost, to me, had the gave me the impression that you're almost jealous of their upbringing. No, Joe is... They're not jealous, not jealous, but you, you wouldn't wish that on yourself, but jealous that that hardness that they've got in them yeah. that you just can't teach. You can't teach, it's installed from you since a kid. So like with me and my brothers, we never got pushed into no sport. We don't have our free free will and free choice, which is essentially better because obviously then you know you love the sport instead of like making a kid, forcing a kid to do a sport that they maybe not like. But like, yeah, no, that, that them Russians, what they do with the wrestling and all them, like, I'll give my hat, my hat off to them. When you, when you watch what they're doing then, do, are you trying to find that deep part of your soul that maybe does understand that a long time ago. No, of course, but you know, in combat sport, you can't ever put your hand up and say, oh, he's better than me. Because like, one day you're gonna have to fight him. So you need to be always like, ready for something. And that's what I liked about the Russians or, or the, the Hansa Chumayev and the, and the Khabib. Yeah. 
they literally stay ready 24-7 and um, yeah simple I'm, life they live a simple exactly, life very simple they live a um, clean life don't they yeah. clean, which I they don't need to party they... it's a good it's not also that it's a good role model for the for the kids coming up as well like um, having having them as role models would be like do you know what I mean for the kids who would be best best to look up to are they role models for you? Um, like I said in my previous interview I don't look up to Noah but Lord Jesus Christ himself but yeah, I do. I do take a lot of what they say in. Tell me about the up and coming heavyweights that you rank at the moment. That you rate. Um, Gerard Anderson. I think he's very good. Um, what What about him? Uh, he can box, box southpaw, box orthodox. He's got good power, good speed. Mm. Yeah, I rate. I rate Gerard Anderson. Um, I think Michael, Michael Huntman. I think, uh, Skills. Yeah, yeah, very, very skillful. Um, and then the rest of them, the ones that I rate are already up there. But if you were to rank the top five, who are they? In which order? Oh, um, what, skill-wise? Or mm. the, the, who, who you rank as your number one to five? So I think I'll put Fury, Fury first. Um, I'll put Uzik second. Um... Jared Anderson third. Already? Yeah. It's interesting. So you think Jared Anderson could beat Wilder, could beat Joyce, could beat you know, Joshua? The thing is, though, like, if you're talking about skill-wise, I do believe. Yeah. But he's just, he is, he is quite small for a heavyweight. Mm. But, yeah, I'll, put, I'll probably put him for, actually, now that you mentioned it, I'll put Deontay Wilder third, Jared Anderson fourth, maybe White fifth. Where's Joyce? Mm, sick. I'll put him sick. Could you beat Joyce now? I believe so. Yeah, I like, I believe I can. Be, I believe I'll, I'll beat a lot of the heavyweights that are, are out there right now. Um, I feel like with my skill, I, I'm, I'm better than them. It's just I need to let my uh, body grow into and your experience body. exactly and my mm. experience. But I believe I'm quite experienced anyway. But obviously, I haven't under the lights. Do you feel destined for great things in the sport? Um, is it already written in in some ways? Or yeah, of course, your life. I believe your life is already planned. Do you before you actually um, you live it? But yeah, mm. I feel like sometimes you don't you don't need to um, don't, you don't need to know what's going to happen. You just need to understand why things happened the way it did. And I do believe I believe I'm on the right path for greatness. I don't know if I'm destined or not, but I do believe I'm on the right path. Just a couple of quick ones, Moses. Um, who are you fighting on Saturday night? Because you've got to fight the copper box. Who? Honest, I don't even know. Do you not even I know their name? I don't look at the opponent. No. no. Your trainer, Dan, does he study them? Uh, yeah, he does, yeah. So you just rely on his plan? Yeah, literally. Like, I don't, obviously, once I get up the rankings, obviously I already will know a bit about the, the boys I'll be boxing. But so you have no fear about your opponent on no, Saturday night? No, You'll no just fear. read them as you go in there? Exactly. And how do you see Joe Joyce and Gili Zhang going on Saturday night? I believe... I would like to say late stoppage, but I think I'm going to go points, Joyce. Joyce. Uh, points, Joyce. When you... You seem a little bit withheld when you talk about Joe and those other guys. Are they all just rivals for you already? They're not. They're not rivals because I don't think I'll even box uh, them. Them people. I feel like I'll be boxing the second wave of the heavyweights now, like uh, Jalilov, Anderson, and all them. Like the younger guys, maybe Dubois. But um, yeah, the uh, them boys. They're, they're, by the time I get up there, they'll already be retired or whatnot.